iwradio.co.uk Isle of Wight Radio Three minutes past midday and it's time to say good afternoon and hello to John Giddings. John, how are you? Very well indeed, thank you. How are you? It's good to have you back in the studio. It's nice to see a bit of sunshine out there. How how long that is going to last, I don't know. You must be listening to that weather forecast and thinking, be kind. I've got a crick in my neck already from looking at the sky, but I think it's going to be sunny today and tomorrow, and then let's see what happens. Right, and you've been putting photos up on uh, Facebook and Twitter and things like that. The site is looking great at the moment, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. We've cut all the grass, we've rolled the lawn effectively. <laughs> it looks brilliant before people arrive. Yeah, OK. <laughs> and, and so there's no cause for alarm here? Absolutely no cause for alarm. It's ready to roll. All right, well, let's start with some music here, because you brought your iPod in, and we've got a whole load of... We're just talking, actually, while the news is on, about artists that we need to play. I don't know how we're going to squeeze them all into an hour, uh, but this lot, um, opening things up, Thursday night, this is Primal Scream. They're back. And they're going to play longer than we asked them to. They phoned up this morning and said, you've got us playing at quarter to ten. Can we go on at half past nine because we want to play for an hour and a half? So we said yes. Excellent. Well, no doubt they'll do this. This is Rocks. Primal Scream, and they're going to be playing uh, in the big top on the Thursday night, and they're headlining that, and that's Rocks. John Giddings in the studio as we talk about a festival uh, that is, well, 2002, 2012. You've done all right, haven't you? Should be the 11th, right? Uh, It's the 10 years off, but the 11th festival. Yeah, it's annoying because it's 2012, but the 11th festival, it's not not the 10th. (laughs) Yeah, it's the 10th year, isn't it? But the 11th, which is slightly confusing. Uh, Who would have thought it would have come to this? I had absolutely no idea when we first started that it would come to this. So when I f- saw those 7,500 people on a one-day concert on the island, uh, the thing that brings it home is I was standing this morning in guest camping, the field that is guest camping, and um, but that was the campsite for the first year with 400 tents in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's now, now 20, 30 times as large extraordinary and are you at the stage with the festival now where everything is pretty much as you'd like it the site is right the access road works uh, is it now after all of this time in in the way that you'd like it to be no it's never right i'm really pleased this year that um i've moved the garden stage to penny lane i've made the entrances and exits from um the arena to the arboretum at least twice as wide the beach is three times the size the big top is another 15, 20% size. Right. It, you're always experiment, experimenting with making it more enjoyable for the audience so they can have a better time. Now, you're on TV again this year, aren't you, with Sky Arts? We are on Sky Arts with the jewel in their crown this summer. We've got six hours a night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Fantastic. So, and, and are they doing it in 3D again this year? They are filming in 3D. Do you know anyone with a 3D television? Do you know, I don't. I've seen them and they're great, but it's that old thing. <laughs> I've of... seen it, yeah, but I don't possess one. No, no. You don't have one in your home? No. No, OK. All right. Do, do you watch much of it afterwards? Because, I mean, how much of it can you actually see? It's, it's gone past the stage of having one stage where you could keep an eye on that. You know, you've got how many performance areas is it now? Four or five? Well, the funniest thing is this morning, the guy that has done the app for us worked out how many acts are playing. It's 220 artists playing over four days so it's physically impossible to see everyone (laughs) what i try and do is watch clips of certain artists you know that i specifically want to see but you spend a lot of your time driving around solving problems and catching artists out of the side of your eye (laughs) we're gonna play biffy clyro here oh i know you're big fans of love them why biffy um i'm half scottish they're a great rock band and the funniest thing is, um, two years ago they played while England were playing in the World Cup and they're in danger of playing this Saturday while England are in Euro 2012 because they're going to win tonight, right? So, so, so what are you doing to Biffy Clyro? You're just giving them the difficult slot? No, I'm giving them the best slot because all the people that don't want to watch football <laughs> want to watch Biffy. I'm sure they'll play this. This is Many of Horror. You say I love you... Biffy Clyro and many of horror. This is Isle of Wight Radio. We're talking to John Giddings. He's the man who puts on the Isle of Wight Festival. And you're just telling me a story off air, which we should talk about on air, actually, John. You should explain the pictures of you that are on Facebook at the moment of you uh, with Westlife. There they are. They're in their nice white suits and you're you're there in their black suit. You're on stage with them. I'm the new lead singer. (laughs) I've replaced Brian McFadden after all these years. (laughs) Is that what it is? No, what what happened was... They're saying goodbye, aren't they? And you're their agent. 
Yes, they are on their farewell tour, which actually finishes this weekend in Crow Park, Dublin, Friday and Saturday. So I went to Glasgow from Southampton on Sunday to give them a farewell present and to say goodbye. And I was standing by the side of the stage and they dragged me up on stage and handed me the microphone. So apparently I gave a speech, but I've got no idea what I said. (laughs) You don't remember it? I I think I told the people I was half Scottish, which went down well. Okay, got the crowd on your side. Exactly, yeah. I've learned that from watching a lot of groups. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you do watch a lot of groups. We were talking while that record was on. You have the, you know, a great job, but it's a job that you have to do. Because I was going to ask you anyway, you are obviously booking acts that you know a thing or two about and you know that they can perform and play live. You obviously spend quite a lot of time keeping that passion alive and you, know, you don't have a normal job. You have to go out and see these bands perform. Well, I enjoy going to gigs. I enjoy seeing artists perform. My job takes place where most people's jobs don't of an evening or at the weekend and I have to travel but I really really enjoy it I think I have the best job in the world and you can't complain about it it's just sometimes when you're not going to a gig and someone says let's go for dinner you say I'd rather go home and watch TV and they think that's a bit odd just go home and watch Mad Men (laughs) exactly Um, we should ask you there's a big uh, piece in the uh, the Daily Telegraph a while ago and they're talking about the Isle of Wight Festival being sold Uh, is that true is it up for sale And would we notice the difference if it was? Well, it's not true that it's up for sale. It's true that I've had approaches because it's the last festival in the UK that's independently owned. I own the whole thing myself. And um, people have come to me because they obviously see that it has opportunities. I mean, what most people don't realise is I do have a real job in London. I book tours for groups around the world. And the Isle of Wight Festival is actually my hobby. You know, it's a hobby I love and enjoy. Um... But if someone could help me partly relieve the financial strain and could bring something extra to it, then you should always consider it. I I was saying off air that Vodafone do a great job on the pre-sale. They have the Vodafone Tower and they've helped with the gates and the wristbands and the cashless system, which we're bringing part in this year, where you can prepay for food and drink. And it's probably the future. So never say never, but I would never give away the heritage or the the vibe of it or the feel I would want to stay in charge. So even if it were to be sold, it would still be John Giddings booking the bands and coming to the Isle of Wight every year, even if the parent company were different, so no one would be thinking, hey, we're going to get someone else running the Absolutely, festival. I would never sell it and under any other terms. Do you make a lot of money off the festival? Because obviously you just said, in, in comparison to what you do and you book tours for the Rolling Stones and U2 and things like that, you, it's interesting that you refer to it as a hobby. It depends what you judge as a lot of money. If you work out the amount of time, energy and the amount of staff I pay out of my own money and the travel, it, you don't make a lot of money, but I would do it until the day I die, as long as I didn't lose, because I honestly don't do it to make money. I do it because I enjoy it. Nobody else I know gets the opportunity. This morning I was walking up on the campsite, 6.30 in the morning, the sun was coming up. It was absolutely beautiful. And to have a job where you go and stand in fields watching the sun come up is extraordinary. We're going to play the Pierces here. Tell us a bit about them. This is a return for the Pierces, isn't it? Yeah, I came across them. I can't remember. I read about them about... 18 months, two years ago, because the bass player in Coldplay phoned them up to support Coldplay, and they said, oh, we're splitting up because nobody's interested in us. And he said, oh, I'll produce the album. So I thought, well, that's worth checking out. So I listened to the album, and it reminded me of a cross between the Mamas and Papas and Fleetwood Mac. That's the vibe I got from it. And I invited them to play last year. And they're two of the loveliest women you could ever meet in your life. They deserve success more than most people. And watching them perform, there's an extra dimension on top of the music. It's just, it's got that hippie drippy feel. And I just fell in love with them. So come on down. All right, we'll play this. This is You'll Be Mine. The Pierces and You'll Be Mine at Isle of Wight Radio 1223. So much to talk about today. We're going to play another song in just a second. We're going to play a classic. We're going to play a bit of Thunderclap Newman. But John, quickly while you're here, um, before we just play a break, um, we mentioned Coldplay then. Coldplay would be a a, a band to have back. Uh, Everyone says to me, can we get Coldplay back? Yeah, I'd love to get them back. I'd love to get the Foo Fighters back. I'd love to get the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'd love to get Blur. I'd love to get Oasis when they reform. I'd love to get Fleetwood Mac. 
you know, until you run out of groups, you've got to keep going, haven't you? So and that Coldplay would always be welcome back. All right, and, and the Rolling Stones story that people might have seen in the press about them playing Glastonbury, you look after their booking, so you'd know if they were doing Glastonbury. But there's no plan. There is no tour plan at all for the Rolling Stones. It's just the usual story. that Glastonbury ask the Rolling Stones to play every year, and nothing happens. So, you know, it's not for me to talk on behalf of the Rolling Stones, but... At this moment in time, they are not playing there. All right, OK. 12.24, we're going to play some Thunderclap Newman next. <laughs> Thunderclap Newman and Something in the Air, which is a big single uh, from... Was that summer 1970? My God, I can't... No, I think it might be earlier than that. Okay. It was number one for ages. A huge record. And but um, they're on the show because the drummer of big country, Mark Brzezicki, part-time plays in Thunderclap Newman... And Pete Townsend works with them, and he just said, could they play? So I said, come on down to the garden stage. Fantastic. And mm-hmm. you've got Andy Fraser from Free. He's got a new project. He's doing something at the festival as well. Yeah, a young kid called Toby. And um, I was put on the radio station the other night as a surprise guest where Andy was on the other line. Right. And I asked him if he still had his Gibson EV3, which played that... <laughs> Sound boom. <laughs> yeah, he was only 18 when he played um, All Right Now in 1970 at the Isle of Wight. But they were my heroes. If you could discover a new group like Free, imagine. Yeah. No, they were a great band. And th- he was so young as well at the time. He joined the band when he was 15, because he was in here the other day and we talked about all of that. Incredible. Why wasn't he at, at school or university? Or <laughs> <laughs> I think it was all right. <laughs> I, I think, think he matters. did okay out yeah, of I it. I think he did okay. Um, what's it like for you? Just talk us through um, on the night when you've got a big act, when you've got uh, a Paul McCartney or, or a Bruce Springsteen or a David Bowie. How does it work? When they, when they arrive, they don't s- stick around on site too much before they go on. And do you spend a little bit of time before they go on? Because they're playing the Isle of Wight for the first time. Is it like every other festival for them? Do you want to go on and say, hey, here's my festival? Festival, or do they not want to see anyone? Because I, I never know. How does it work? Normally go and say hello, introduce myself. They ask a couple of questions. They normally know most of it beforehand, but they like to get the vibe of what the audience are reacting to, how they feel, what the weather prediction is like. They're professionals, absolute. That's why they're at the top of their game. The likes of Mick Jagger, Paul McCartney, David Bowie, they all share that ability to succeed and project and it's amazing charisma to see close up and Dave Grohl's got it you know the nicest guy on earth when he stopped in the middle of the song and just looked at the audience and went wow (laughs) it's an ability that we don't possess as normal human beings and it's wonderful to see it close up but our job is to enable them to perform to the best of their ability you know I got a phone call this morning about Bruce Springsteen's people um, we're looking if if there's a masseuse close by, if we needed one. Right. Just little things like that make life easier for everybody concerned because if someone has backache or a bad knee or something, you can sort it out very, very quickly. I remember when it was announced that the Rolling Stones were playing, you got Ronnie Wood on the phone. And, uh, oh, that's right. He called yeah. into the show. And so I said to him, um, are you going to spend any time on the Isle of Wight while you're here? And he was honest. He said, and I vividly remember, he said to me, it'll probably be a hit and run, which I thought that's was That's absolutely expression. correct. Because artists don't normally go to Shanklin the next day, do they? In fairness, no. they come in, helicoptered in, helicoptered out. Um, lots of them come on the ferry. The Stones went on the ferry with Amy Winehouse. Bowie was on the ferry. He doesn't like flying. Um, Brian Ferry was on the ferry. He went up on the, you know, at the top. And um, uh, these these people that have busy lives, you know, it's easy to get to on and off. Mm. And there's some nice hotels here, but they're used to a different thing, really, aren't they? And they're going from A to B to C to D. And they've got a pa- gig in Germany the next day. Yeah, night. Paul McCartney arrived from Dublin the morning of the show. He flew here overnight with the equipment on an aeroplane to Southampton, which had to be put on a ship across. It's very tight schedules. They don't normally hang around. Was it Coldplay that watched the Grand Prix before they came down? Yes, that's right. That's right. (laughs) I thought it was really casual. If you're going to play a rock concert, let's go and watch the Grand Prix first. Your Sky are going to broadcast the Grand Prix on Sunday afternoon in their Sky experience in the arena, actually. Okay. In 3D, if you want to say. You've got that and the football. Exactly. Not getting in the way of the music. Right, we had a Gallagher brother here already. Uh, We had Liam last year with BDI. This year we get Noel. 
Um, well, we had to get both of them because eventually we want to get the both of them together. <laughs> so you've got to play fair. <laughs> I thought he was great, Liam, last year. I thought it was a powerful performance. I liked the Union Jack coat. Because they shot a video for their single, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And um, he's got balls, hasn't he? Yeah. You know, he stood up and get, got counted. I mean, I can't speak for them as brothers falling out with each other, but look at the kinks. Mm. And the who? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, the Who aren't brothers, No, are no, they? but they had that you know, yeah. love-hate thing, and then after a while the hate calmed down and now they're mates again. I think they're both capable of making good music individually, and I think together they make incredible music. I think the Noel Gallagher album is very, very good, though. I think the sad thing about the any group splitting up is that people don't get to hear those songs anymore, because they feel... I mean, Noel's playing the ones that he wants to play, and Liam, I think, is about to start playing Oasis songs. But they're great songs, and to, to take them away from people kind of feels wrong, because they don't get on. No, that's right. Um, but, you know, how can you speak for these other people? They do things when they feel it's right and when they want to do it. And I don't know. You know, you should be looking at groups like The Vaccines coming up. That's one of my favourite albums of the last year. I think Zulu Winter, Spectre, Switchfoot, all those bands in the big top. They're the future of rock music, so you should check them out. Band of Skulls. All right, well, we've got Oasis queued up here, so we're going to play Don't Look Back in Hunger. We'll get to the new stuff in just a second. He will play this, I'm sure. He never sings the first chorus on this, just steps away from the mic right. and lets the crowd do it, wow. and they do it every time. Oasis. We'll play that on the Sunday night. Uh, Noel Gallagher, uh, and that's Oasis and Don't Look Back in Anger. 19 minutes to one. If you're hearing this and thinking, do you know, I haven't bought a ticket yet. Hey, this sounds interesting. How does it work with tickets, John? Um, we've sold out on the camping tickets. We've got a few non-camping left, but I've held a few tickets back for the night because I hate driving down Fairley Road and seeing all those touts offering tickets more expensively. So... There are a few left that I will sell on the door to select people. <laughs> so that will be, what, Friday morning? Thursday and Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yes. And, and if, anyone is, if anyone gets to Saturday and thinks, or Sunday and thinks, do you know, I really fancy seeing Bruce Springsteen, should have got there earlier? I mean... Should have got there earlier. Yeah, OK. Um, how's it working with people reselling tickets? Is that, is that all stopped now, the eBay thing and via GoGo? Well, the problem is it's not illegal. I don't mm. understand in this country why it's illegal to resell a football ticket but not a music ticket. But um, if you bought a house today and sold it tomorrow, you could sell it for more money, if you like, or a car. It, you can argue it both ways. Mm. You don't have to buy from these people, do you? Well, you wouldn't advise that people do because you've got no guarantee, have you? And Because we're now at the stage where people can't sell them on eBay even if they want to because if they want to get them in the post and get it... In no, time that's right. for someone to... But the worrying thing is, with the advent of the internet, normal people, as opposed to companies, are buying more than they require themselves on the basis they think they can resell the other tickets to pay for the tickets they first bought. So I've seen certain shows go on sale and sell out like a rocket, so the promoter thinks, well, let's do a second show, and then they put the second show on sale and it dies, because actually... Half the tickets for the first show haven't effectively been sold. They've all appeared all over the internet. Yeah. Because it's they, a dangerous game. You, you know, obviously, um, how your tickets sell year in, year out. How much of it is the artists that sell tickets and how much of it is the economic climate and what else is going on out there? Do artists actually sell tickets? Yeah, I think it's 50-50. I think 50% of the audience would come because they love the event, they love the feel of it. They li like hanging out and going to the different places and going to the Spiegel tent, the beach, the dance tent. And I think 50% want to see the headliners. But, you know, this year we have more strength in depth than we've ever had with Lana Del Rey, Tiny Temper, Jesse J. Every kid in the world wants to see Jesse J. Labyrinth, I think, will be great. Hasn't been mentioned a madness after the Buckingham, ha Buckingham Palace concert. <laughs> I thought they were one of the highlights. Yeah, with well, the madness, they know how to put on an event, don't they, and, and bring a bit of spectacle to what they do. Yeah, they've been practising for a few years. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, are they going to be going out? In the, they're not going to be able to go out in the crowd and do that thing that he does, <laughs> are they? I have no idea till they get here what they're going to do. All right. And when are they on there on Saturday on afternoon? Saturday afternoon. Okay. Late afternoon. Well, okay, do some times for us. Um, what time? I can't remember the times of hand test me. All right. Okay. What time does it all start Thursday? Starts on Thursday, six o'clock, 
uh, Strawberry Fields opens, and in the big top there is Penguin Prison, The Stranglers, Primal Scream. On the garden stage there's the Brit Pink Floyd, Howard Jones. Oh, when um, Thunderclap Newman are on the Saturday, right? Because right. of the, I had to move that. Um, I mean, the fields will open. The campsite opens at twelve noon, so you'll be able to pitch your tent and hang out and have a good time before you come into Strawberry. Thursday night is always great. A campers' night has a real party feel to it. Yeah, and you don't have to feel so responsible because the main arena is not open, so you get to mingle with the audience, hang out, and have a good time. First band on on Friday is Feeder. Okay, four o'clock on the main stage, pushing the sensors. Okay, and uh, headliner Friday night, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. How long are they on for? What time are they doing? They the start at ten thirty, finish at midnight, an hour and a half. Okay, what time does it start? Saturday on the main arena. Saturday, the main arena, I think, is quarter to twelve or twelve o'clock with the local band, and then. Um, and then you're until what midnight Saturday night? Yeah, midnight. Because that's the late one. Pearl Jam really? finish yeah. at midnight. Well, Tom Petty finishes at midnight Friday. the night before. Yeah. Um, Charlatans finish at twelve thirty on the Garden Stage on Saturday night. Bruce Springsteen finishes at eleven o'clock on the Sunday, but he goes on at eight, so you have plenty of time to see him. Three hours of him. And do you still finish with All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix and A Blaze for Fireworks? I've got the fireworks, but it's not All Along the Watchtower. Everybody keeps asking me which song I've chosen, but it's a <laughs> Closely kept secret. Is it still Hendrix? No, it's not Hendrix this year. Okay, all right. It's uh, just gone quarter to eleven, uh, quarter to one. John Giddings here on the show. More festival music coming up next. It's uh, twelve minutes to one. We're back with John Giddings, trying to squeeze in as much as we can because there's so much to do uh, between now and one o'clock. What are you doing after one, John? Well, just let us into uh, where we are, what stage we're at with putting the festival together. I've got a heads of department meeting at one o'clock, so they're going to be expecting me very shortly. Oh, uh, okay. All right. We're at the state of play where. Half the structures are built, the main structures are built, the stage is nearly completed, the header is going up on it, um, the Strongbow Bar is up, the Ray-Ban Bar, the Big Top has been erected. There's still lots to do there, there's always a last minute rush, and you have to be careful, that, as I say, having had some damp weather, you don't want to ruin the ground for the people coming to pitch up their tents. All right, um, who are you most looking forward to seeing? Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, actually, because he's one of my favourite groups of all time. I grew up with his music. He's one of the rock, best rock bands ever. I'm really proud of this year's lineup. to be perfectly honest. It's just extraordinary to get Pearl Jam, Bruce Springsteen and Tom Petty in the same field. We're going to play some Bruce Springsteen here. Ali is listening uh, and heard us talking about the fact that uh, Bruce's people had asked for someone to do massage. Well, Ali is qualified and has a ticket anyway, so is quite happy to volunteer to do that. Ali, I'm going to take your number and I'm going to give it to our production <laughs> staff. You might get a phone call and get to touch Bruce Springsteen. How cool would that be? Uh, here's a bit of Bruce. This is Girls in Their Summer Clothes. <laughs> It's Bruce Springsteen and that's girls in their summer clothes. We're pretty much out of time. John, you've got to go and get away. Um, a highlight for you, you've already said, is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That's the one that you're going to be going to see. What's your message to everyone um, who's bought tickets and is coming to the festival? You should bring your wellies. You should bring sun cream. You should behave nicely. You should enjoy the weekend. Thanks for coming. We really appreciate it. And your message for people uh, who aren't coming um, but are on the island anyway and it's sort of going on around them? Um... Just be, please be tolerant of all the people who come once in a year to see the festival, and we appreciate you welcome, welcoming us and looking after us. How's Thank you. How's Fairley Road this year? Are you, is, is it well, it kills sort of me, the Fairley Road market. situation, because it's easier to drive down when the festival is on than it, it is on a normal Saturday <laughs> afternoon. I was stuck there last Saturday. <laughs> and have the stalls all set up yet? Half of them are. The Dimbala stall is up. I've seen that already. Oh, who else was I going to plug? ESP Signage. I said I'd give them a plug. OK. Hello to the guys at ESP Signage. Good. OK. Thanks you very much for coming in. Um, we'll catch up with you Friday because we're live from the site on Friday morning. I'll see you Thursday for Primal Scream and everyone else in the tent. Uh, we're very excited about thanks it. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. All right. Thanks for that. And Bye -bye. we'll play out with this lot. Uh, Charlatan's doing their thing.